Hello everybody, this is the full code for the key card lock as you can see there in the top right. So in this um, in this code tutorial I'm basically going to be talking as I type and just describing everything I'm typing. Um, this is very similar to the touchpad uh, tutorial or you know code so um, I might copy paste a bit, I'll try not to if I can avoid it so okay. Um, let's get started. So first of all, um, we've got to define the sides. We always define the sides because why the hell not? I think in the future I might make an API to make this simple because I do this every time and it's just getting silly. So left, right, top, oop, bottom, um, front. And back. So that's the six sides there. So next thing to do is figure out what the output side is. So output side. If you didn't watch last episode, um, the reason why I'm putting them in caps is because I'm not supposed to be changing them and that lets me know that. So when I'm writing the code, I'll never change anything that's in caps. So bottom, except for at the top, obviously, when I'm decline, uh, defining it. So. Let's do, uh, because this is going to make noise, we're going to want to define what noises to make. So we've got, a, we've got our note block on the top, an iron note block, so we want to make it go like dun -dun or dun -dun when you get the code wrong or something, okay? So, um, for this we'll make two, so we need combo success. I'll call them combo success, but that's basically because I'm just copying it from the old one. Um, 11, 13, so that's the tone of 11 and the tone of 13, and then we say local combo fail equals 4, 3, and then that should be a nice fail noise. So next thing up is we'll define the door. Is the door open? So we'll say pass door open, that's how you spell door. Pass door open uh, equals pulse, door shut, don't need that. Um, local, and then we'll make the, uh, a variable to hold all the variables for the door. So pass door equals the table, and then inside that we have pass door dot close is the color to close it. So let's call it dot green, and then pass let's go door. Dot open is the color needed to open it, which is colors dot beep dot red. Uh, okay, so then last thing we need is how many pulses it takes to shut the door, or do anything to the door, open the door, shut the door, whatever. So and that's four. Okay, so now we need a variable to hold the note block. So variable no local note, and now we're going to create a lookup table that defines what disks are allowed. So we'll call it disk. So I'll leave it like that because we might, in the future, we might want to be able to add things to this through code, but right now we won't, but I'll, I'll leave it. I won't have it capitals. So make a table. Now the idea of this is the disks in uh, are what's going to be our key cards for the lock. Now all the disks in mine, uh, computer, computer craft, when you create them, they get a unique ID that you can't fake. Uh, and that's very cool because that means that each key, each disk is unique and, and uncopyable, so to speak. So that means we can say, oh, hello, text message. So that means that if I say I've got a disk with a code of, with a, an ID of one, someone can't just make a new disk and um, with the same ID, it will never have the same ID. So I already know the ID IDs for these. Um, I will put a little video up showing you how to get the IDs of disks. Um, so the ID, the disks for these are disk ID um, 1 and 2. So what I'm doing here is I'm making an entry under 1 and 2 in the table that's true. Now that means that when we're doing, um, when we're checking to see if a disk is, the, uh, is a, an accurate key card that's allowed to open the door, all we need to do is pass in the ID as a index in the table. So in this case, one and two would be true, but three wouldn't be because it doesn't exist. You see? So 
for example, if someone puts in disk three, I'll say disk IDs, disk, uh, and then the ID of the disk they've put in, which in this case will be three. Is it true? No, it isn't because we haven't defined it as being true. So it's false. So that means you don't get to come in. If, for example, they put a disk in and it is it has an ID of two, we say we say disk ID, and then in the square brackets, um, what is the disk ID? It's two. What does it equal? True. Okay, you can open the door. It really is as simple as that. So firstly, let's make a function. I'm not even going to write this function. There's no point in writing it. I wrote it last time. So I'm just going to copy in the events that we used in the last tutorial. And there is a lot of them. So, and then I'll go through them briefly just for anybody who didn't um, watch the last one. So, okay, so that's those. So the first one is get note block. Now, get note block, what that does is it returns the side that the note block's attached to. And it does this just by simply iterating through the sides to find at the top there. Um, uh, checks to see if it's a note block. And then if it is, returns it wrapped in a peripheral wrapper. Simple. So that means you can then, so what we do is we, we say note equals get note block and it will just give you the note block if there is one. Uh, next one is clear events. What that does is first it adds, um, oh, brief, briefly if you don't know about events, events in Computercraft are a way of making things happen out of turn. So you can make your program react to things. So in this case, we want the program to react to a disk being put in the drive, yeah? And there's an event for that called, um, I think it's just called disk. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna add an, an event, our, our own custom event called clear to the event list, right? Then forever, so until we're gonna forever, we're gonna we'll start a loop that goes on, doesn't have an initial stopping value. It will always keep going. So we keep pulling events and if the event that gets pulled is clear, so the one we've just done there, so if the event is clear, then we end the loop and we're done because the because the event queue is now empty in theory. You see? Um, so if there's five um, other things on the queue, in the queue, sorry, um, when we add clear, that will be the sixth. And then this will, this will run six times until clear comes through because we know that the only clear that could possibly be in the queue is the one added at the beginning of this function. You see? Now, Pulsar S is really, really simple. Um, it takes side as an argument, number of times you want to do it, which is usually defined as N, and color as an argument. So if, if it has, if you pass in color, um, then it will add that color, it will pulse that color on for 0.45 of a second, then turn it off, and then wait 0.45 of a second, and then do it as many times as you want it to happen. Um, if you don't give it a color, it'll assume that it's just the whole side, just turn it on, uh, in which case it will just do that. So rs.setoutput, uh, what side we're talking about, true, sleep for half a second, rs.setoutput, side, false. So you must already know what setoutput does. Um, setoutput turns on the redstone coming out of that side or turns it off depending on whether you give it true or false. Now over here, set bundled output. I'm going to go over this really for everyone who hasn't, who doesn't already know. Set bundled output. What that does is you give it a side to tell what side we're talking about, and then you give it a color to turn on, or sort of a number that represents the colors, and then um, you give it a uh, something else, which I've totally forgotten right now. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, yeah, sorry. You just give it the color to turn on. And what I'm doing there is I'm combining the colors that are already on. So get bundled output on that side. So that gets all the colors that are on with the color I want to turn on, which is that one there. So it only takes two arguments. I'm being stupid. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, that one's that. Play note uh, basically takes a table of notes, which what we've defined up here. So that's two tables there. And then goes through and for as many notes as there are until we've done them all and just plays them using the note block as such as so and move door just uses pulse rs to open and close a door via one of these so you give it a pass door close open pulses and it passes in pulses uh, if it's open you pass in pulses open and if you if it's close so if, if open is false then it's output side number of pulses and the color 
close the door. Simple. Okay, so let's get on with the new stuff. So for this one, we don't need, in the last function, in the last um, program, we needed to get the, the monitor, didn't we? Or monitors. Um, and this one we don't need to because disks um, work a bit differently. Or disk drives work a bit differently. But we do need to check the disk. So, so we're going to say check disk side because there's two of them and that and then oh goodness. okay so we say if um so, we'll just, so that's the table that's the lookup table we said about so if disk ids and then we get the id from the disk we're talking about so get id side then end so what that does here is we say disk IDs, which is that function up here that we talked about. Disk IDs, and then using the disk API, get the ID of the disk in the side we're talking about. So that will equate to a number. So it'll be, say, for example, one if it's my disk, or two if it's Bunce's disk, or three if it's some other person's disk, and that won't let them in. Um, or I think it's minus one, I think, if someone just puts in a random item. Um, so obviously, again, not valid. So what we do then is I would say we return, return true, because that's good, that we've checked it and it's good. Else return false. Now you'll notice I haven't done an else there. I haven't said if else, I've just said end and then return false. That's because a return ends the function. So as soon as we get, as soon as the function hits a return statement like that, it will it will it won't do this. You see? So we don't need to do else because this will never get run if we hit that. If you get me. So if that's if that's not true, so we won't hit this, we'll go straight past it and we'll get to that. So it's exactly the same thing, but it's just quicker to write and more efficient for the code. So next I think that's it. So let's make main. So uh, local function main um so oh, spell. so and that and then first things first let's define the timer so event timer so that's um to reset the event list uh, the event um checking so that it doesn't crash so let's get the note block note equals get note block like so um Let's do a little print so we know it's working. So closing door, like so. Um, and then we want to close the door. Pass, pass door, there we go. Um, and then we'll sleep for a second, just, just so that we know everything's good, okay? Yeah, okay. So now that we've slept for a second, um, actually that's the point. The clear events thing that I'm doing here, I've noticed that if you don't sleep before for at least about a second, maybe half a second, before you do clear events, it will never hit the clear event. I don't know if that's a bug or if I've done something silly, but just making it wait for a second seems to do it. So so we do clear events, those brackets. So now we've got a clear event list, we've shut the door, everything is hunky-dory. So now we're ready to go. So we say, we open the, the program loop. So we say, while true do, close that loop. Okay, so while true do, let's define the event timer. So the point of the event timer, as, as I mentioned in the last episode, is to stop the pulling the event pulling from crashing the computer. Because if the event pull lasts more than about 10 seconds, the computer will crash to stop it from lagging out the server. So what we want to do is make sure that the computer doesn't crash. So we'll say start timer six seconds. So in six seconds, it'll fire a timer event. So now we want to pull the pull an event. So we say side e and side equals the return of os dot pull event. So now this will every time an event comes through, uh, this will get a um, it, this will do something. So we say if e, which is the name of the event. So if we've got there, we've got e uh, comes through as the first argument, oh, first return, sorry, of os pull event. So if e equals disk, which means we've had a disk event, then 
Um, first one. Just let, let us know what, what's going on. So first uh, disk in. Um, so we'll print that, and then we'll sleep for 0 0.2 of a second, so get the player a chance to realise what the hell they've just done. They've put the disk in the drive, but otherwise it'd be very, very quick, and it's really, really dis disjointing if it's really quick. Um, oh, actually, hold on. No, we've not even checked yet. So, oh yeah, well, no, we'll sleep first, because that, that makes more sense. So, we'll make it look like it's actually thinking about it. So, you say if, and then we'll check the disk, check disk. And then the side, which we've got up there, we just we've got that in the in the variables there, so like that. So if side, so that's the side that we get the return back from the disk event. The, then um, let's let's not so that's the correct disk. So opening door. Shut down like that. There you go. Door opening door. Sleep. No, no, don't sleep. We already slept. Um, play note. And then that's the combo success, isn't it? Success. Note. Eject the disk. Uh, dot eject side. So eject whatever's in the disk drive at side. And then move door. Pass door. And we want to open it, so I think that's true. Sleep for five seconds. Seconds. So that's how long the door stays open, it's five seconds. And then reboot the computer. Reboot. Because we'll have we'll have this as startup on the computer, so. So in that. Uh, oh no, we're not in that, sorry, else. So if it's the wrong disk, we want to play notes, combo fail, and disk dot checked. Side. So it gets what whatever's in there gets thrown away. So there we go. And that one. Yes, we have. And and then run main because we've defined everything. We just haven't run anything yet. So running main. So that is actually all there is to it. Like how much simpler is that compared to the last one? So much quicker to write. Um, so yeah, let's go test out in game. If you want to uh, see this in action, um, just check it out on the uh, the primary video um, if you have any questions or if this something in here didn't work for you let us know in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and you want to see more thank you for watching and goodbye